Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Today we are going to start unit second of our syllabus which is mainly about spatial theory of relativity. Spatial theory of relativity changes our ideas of space and time. Or I can say it is contrary to our common sense. That's why you need to be very attentive. Very attentive and careful throughout this unit. So we start with an idea of relative motion. You know, before going into the relative motion, most of the students, even teachers, get confused when uh, we consider the concept of relative motion. So first I would say whenever we say something is moving, it is understood that it is moving with respect to some other body. And you know, with the reference body, with reference body, we attach our coordinate system. So if we have to decide some particle is moving with time or not, we have some reference body and we attach our coordinate system to that reference body and see how the position coordinates of the particle change with time or not. If the position changes with time, uh, we say it's moving with respect to this reference frame. And when we say reference frame, it means we have some body reference body and we have attached to that body this coordinate system and we have some clock to measure the time. I repeat, if a body moves with respect to some other body, we say it's moving related to that body. And to describe motion, we attach a reference frame like X, Y, Z, Cartesian coordinate system to our reference body and we have some clock. And when we talk of this reference body, we call it reference frame of, or frame of reference. This much you know. So be very careful and patient in this lecture and all coming lectures. Listen to me keenly and patiently. So let me, let me move to the next page. So we're talk, talking of now relative motion. So suppose there is some highway. So it is some straight
i right so on this highway suppose you are moving in a car i will make a cartoon of this car so suppose this is your car this is your car right and you are moving in this car down this straight highway at a constant speed of 55 kilometer per hour so you are a, you are in a car and your car is moving on this straight highway to the right at constant speed of 55 kilometer per hour right now the others with you there may uh, suppose there are other people with you the others who are sitting with you in the car are moving at the same speed even though their speed relative to the ground is uh, even though their speed relative to the ground is 55 km per hour their speed relative to you is zero I repeat suppose you are here you are here and there is some other person in black sitting next to you so relative to the ground uh, let me uh, place some mark on the ground so this is my ground so relative to ground your car is going to the right at constant speed 55 km per hour what does that mean that means the gap between this point on the ground or let me say there is some pole on the ground with respect to which there is some pole on the ground fix it on the ground with respect to which we are talking of this speed so suppose this car is going to the right at constant speed of 55 km per hour relative to this pole on the ground attached to this ground that means the gap between the car and this pole is increasing by 55 km every hour that's the meaning of 55 km per hour speed of your car relative to the ground right so now the person sitting next to you this is you this is your friend in the car now your friend is in the same car so your friend is also moving related to the ground related to this pole in the ground at the same constant speed 55 km per hour to the right but the speed of your friend relative to you or the speed of uh, or the your speed related to your friend is zero because the gap between you and your friend is not changing with time so your relative speed is zero right now in your car you can carry out a normal set of physical experiments that would be unaffected by the uniform motion of the car i repeat in your car you could carry out a normal set of experiments physics experiments that would be unaffected by the uniform motion of the car for example you could toss a ball directly upward in your reference frame that's in your car uh, you certainly have to use the coordinate system and clock so you could toss a ball 
directly upward and you would observe it to fall directly downward. The ball has horizontal motion related to the ground because of the motion of the car, but you have the same horizontal motion related to the ground and there is no relative horizontal motion between you and you, the ball tossed by you. I repeat, I am saying, in your car, you could carry out a normal set of physics experiments that would be unaffected by the uniform motion of the car. That means the uh, what you see if the car is at rest, you will see the same thing happening if you are moving in this car at this constant speed, which we have taken 55 kilometer per hour, right? So I said you could toss a ball directly upward and you would observe it to fall directly downward. The ball has horizontal motion related to the ground or related to this pole in the ground because of the motion of the car, but you have the same horizontal motion and there is no relative horizontal motion between you and the ball, right? But to an observer on the ground, so you in the car will observe your ball going up and coming down. This is not a parabolic path, it is just for illustration. Going up and going down. This all will be in straight line. Ball will go up, then ball will come down in a straight line. Right? But the person, or if you consider an observer here on the ground, so here on the ground, if there is some observer observing this ball, which you have tossed in the car, to that observer, the result is different. For the observer on the ground, ball has a forward horizontal component of velocity equal to 55 km per hour and a vertical component from the motion you give it. And we know that a projectile in gravity with such velocity components follow a projectile follows a parabolic trajectory. I repeat, the ball tossed by you will be seen by you going in a straight line, going up and then down. But the observer on the ground looking at your ball will observe that ball to move in a parabolic path. Because for observer on the ground, the ball will have horizontal velocity due to the motion of the car, which is 55 km per hour to the right. And the ball will have also vertical velocity because you are tossing the ball with some velocity in vertical direction. So the observer on the ground will observe parabolic trajectory traversed by the ball. So you and the ground-based observer would therefore use different equations to describe the motion of the ball, but you would agree on the physical laws followed by the ball. I repeat, you and the ground-based observer would therefore use different equations because the ground-based observer will use the equations for projectile motion. You will observe equations for free fall motion. There are different set of equations, but you would agree on the physical laws followed by the ball. For example, from your experiment, if you deduce the value of acceleration due to gravity G, and from the experiments or observations uh, uh, made by the ground-based observer, the ground-based observer will make calculation of G from his observations, he will deduce the same value of G. So you will agree on the 
physical laws followed by the ball. Right? Let us move forward. Now, if another car now pulls up beside you, there is another car beside you, your car, it's moving to the right at constant speed of 57 kilometer per hour with respect to the ground or this pole in the ground. I repeat, if another car now pulls up beside you, right, and passes at a constant speed of 57 kilometer per hour, when I say this speed is understood with respect to the ground, right? What will you observe? You will, you will not observe this car moving to the right at 57 kilometer per hour speed. That means the gap between your car and this another car will not increase per hour by 57 kilometer because you're already moving at 55 kilometer per hour speed to, related to the ground. So what will you observe? You will observe the second car moving ahead of you slowly at only two kilometer per hour speed. 57 kilometer per hour minus 55 kilometer per hour will, will, will give you two kilometer per hour. So I repeat, if another car is going to the right and 57 kilometer per hour related to the ground, then you would observe this second car moving ahead of you slowly at two kilometer per hour speed only. Another thing, if you take away the external clues which we see in the moving car, we see scenery speeding by, still air rushing past the moving car, there is bumpiness of the road, there is noise of the engine. If we take away all these things and consider only the two cars, you would have no way to decide which car was really moving. I repeat, if you take away the external clues, which external clues, which I already mentioned, the Scenery speeding by, the still air rushing past the moving car, the bumpiness of the road and the noise of the engine. And you consider only the two cars. I write it in inverted commas. You would have no way to decide no way to decide which car was really moving. You would have no way to decide which car was really moving. For example, The passing car could be at rest. Its velocity is zero related to the ground. And your car, upper car is your car, could be moving backward at two kilometer per hour speed. The observer result would be the same. I am saying this situation and this situation is equivalent. The situation is that the other car is going to the right 
at 57 km per hour related to ground. Your car is going at 55 km per hour. So you are seeing other car going relative to you at two km per hour speed to the right. I'm saying if you don't see external clues and consider only these two cars, this situation is equivalent to this situation. You cannot decide whether this car is going at 57 km per hour and you are going at 55 km per hour related to the ground or this thing is happening. You, you are only observing the second car, the gap between second car and you is increasing by two kilometer per hour. The same situation here. If this car is at rest related to ground and you are going to the left at two kilometer per hour speed, the gap between you and this car will increase by two kilometer every hour. Same situation here. Right. So these two situations are equivalent. Right. Now in this section of relative movement, this was these situations I discussed to make you understand that motion is relative. And when you say something is moving at certain speed, you have to specify with respect to what. Like you and your friend were moving at 55 kilometer later to the ground, but you are at rest rate to your friend, your friend is at rest rate to you, right? Now in this section, we consider the description of motion of a single particle by two observers who are in uniform relative motion relative to one another. Now the two observers might be for example a person in a car moving at constant velocity along a long straight road and another person standing at rest on the ground. The particle they are both observing might be a ball tossed into the air or another moving car. I repeat, in this section, what we are going to consider, we want to consider the description of motion of a single particle by two observers. That means two observers are observing the motion of some particle. Now the two observers are in uniform motion related to one another. Now the two observers might be, for example, a person in the car moving at constant velocity along a long straight road and another person standing at rest on the ground. The particle they are both observing might be a ball, which we discussed, toss it into the air or another moving car. Now we call these two observers S and S prime. We call these two observers S and S prime. These are our two observers. Now each observer has a corresponding reference frame to which it attached a Cartesian coordinate system. This observer has its own reference frame to which it attaches Cartesian coordinate system and same is true for S prime observer. Now for convenience, we assume the observers to be located at the origin of their respective coordinate systems. But we make one restriction on the situation that the relative velocity between S and S dash must be a constant. So restriction is Restriction in our discussion is that the relative velocity between S and S prime 
is constant. Right? And when we say relative velocity between S and S prime is constant, by that we mean constant in both magnitude and direction. Both magnitude and direction. Right? And this res restriction does not include the motion of the particle. That means the particle being observed by the two observers need not necessarily be moving with constant velocity. And indeed, that particle may be accelerating. Let us draw this figure. The situation is like this. This is my S prime. So it has its coordinate system, X prime, Y prime. It has its origin. So, and that origin, I draw some cartoon, which is the observer, right? And then I have another observer who has, uh, which I call S, who has its own uh, coordinate system x, y. We are discussing the motion in two dimensions, but this motion results are applicable in three dimensions as well, the results which we obtain. So this observer is located at S, uh, its origin. There is some particle P, which is observed by both right s observer and s prime observer now at some time this diagram is at some time t now s and s prime are moving with respect to each other they observe the same moving particle p at the time shown, what they measure, this observer S prime locates the particle P with a position vector. We call this RP S prime. What is RP S prime? It is position vector or just position you can write of particle P relative to S prime observer. That means position of particle P as measured by S prime. Now, observer S also locates its position at the same time, and that is this position vector. What we call it, we call it R P S. What is R P S? I write simply position of particle P relative to S observer, right? Now, since the observer S prime is moving relative to S observer, so observer S also locates S prime observer. 
by the position r s prime s what is r s prime s r s prime s is the position of at the time of observation right so it is position of observer s prime relative to observer s right this position of observer s prime related to observer s so we have three positions here i repeat situation is like this there are two observers they have their coordinate systems and we are assuming the observers are located at the origin of their coordinate systems s prime observer is moving with respect to s observer and we are restricting that the relative velocity between s and s prime observer is constant both in magnitude and direction now at the time shown in this figure let us name this figure a at that time situation is like this this is coordinate system of both observers observer s find is the position of particle p as rps observer s prime finds its position as rp s prime and observer s find is the position of the observer s prime as r s prime s right now from triangle law you can see these three vectors are related this vector is sitting at the tip of this so r p s is the resultant of r s prime s and r p s prime i can write from figure what is name figure a from figure a using triangle law of vector addition i can write r es is equal to r s dash s or s prime s plus r p s prime i name it equation first right so i can write r p s is equal to r s uh, s prime s plus r p s prime this vector is this vector plus this vector p s prime s prime s equal r p s convince yourself from the diagram now if i differentiate this equation first related to with respect to time we change the color differentiating equation first with respect to time t we get d by dt of r p s is d by dt of r s prime s plus d by dt of r p s prime now we know the derivative of position with time is velocity so what is it it is simply vps what is it it is v s prime s 
it is v e s prime right or you can use the commutative law of vector addition and write v p s prime first plus v s prime s let me name this equation second let me encircle it before interpreting anything simple we have differentiated equation first with respect to time we got the velocity equation what is bps let me write here simple vps is velocity of particle p as measured by observer s what is vps prime vps prime is velocity of particle p e as measured by observer s prime what is v s prime s we use another color what is v s prime s it is simple the relative velocity between s and s prime then velocity of s prime relative to s or measured by s so the simply relative velocity between s and s prime right so my equation is saying that at any instant the velocity of particle p is as measured by s is equal to velocity of particle p as measured by s prime plus the velocity plus the relative velocity of s prime with respect s right now remember although we have illustrated equations first and second that is this one and this one for motion in two dimensions they hold equally well in three dimensions now equation 2 is a law of the transformation of velocities it permits us to transform a measurement of velocity made by an observer in one frame of reference say s prime to another frame of reference say s as long as we know the relative velocity between the two reference frames it is a law firmly grounded both in the common sense of everyday experience and in the concepts of space and time that are essential to the classical physics of galileo and newton in fact this equation 2 is called so i write equation 2 is often called might be knowing it galilean galilean form of the law of transformation of velocities galilean form of the law of transformation of velocities right and we are considering the 
special case in which the two reference frames are moving at constant velocity with respect to one another. We are saying V S prime S is constant both in magnitude and direction. Right? I further emphasize the velocities Vps and Vps prime that S and S prime major for the particle P may not be constant. And of course, they will in general not be equal to one another. In only one situation, they will be equal. C, if relative velocity of the two observers is zero, then Vp S prime is equal to Vp S. They will measure the same velocity for the particle P. But if there is relative velocity between the two observers, the velocities measured by the two observers of the particle P will differ and the relation between them is given by this equation two called Galilean law or form of the transformation of velocities, right? Now, there is another significant result that follows from differentiation of equation two. So we differentiate equation two with respect to time. Differentiating equation two with respect to time t, we get what I get d by dt of Vps is equal to d by dt of Vps prime plus Oh, sorry, this plus V by DT of V S prime S S prime S, right? D by DT of VPS is equal to D by DT of VPS prime plus D by DT of V S prime S, right? What is d by dt of s prime s? As we said, it is constant in time. So this is zero. Derivative is zero. So what is v derivative of velocity? We know derivative time derivative of velocity is acceleration. So it is APS. It is AP s prime. It is zero, so we name it equation third, and I encircle this equation. Let me use this color, so I encircle it. Now what is APS? This term is zero, right? This is zero. Because we're assuming velocity, relative velocity between the observers is constant in time. We get APS is equal to APS prime. What is APS? It is acceleration of the particle P measured by observer S and APS, uh, APS prime is the acceleration measured by of the particle P measured by the observer S prime. So the accelerations of P measured by the two observers are identical. And we know acceleration is related to the net force acting on the particle, right? So equation three, uh, uh, remember it was derived in the special circumstance that the reference frames move with a relative velocity that is constant in both magnitude and direction. Now such frames like S and S prime, which may move relative to one another, but in which all observers find the same value of the acceleration 
of a given moving particle are called inertial reference frames. I repeat, such frames which may move such frames like S and S prime which may move relative to one another but in which but in which all observers in which all observers find the same value for the acceleration of a given moving particle given moving particle are called inertial reference frames remember this forever such frames like S and S prime, which may more related to one another, but in which all observers find the same value for the acceleration of a given particle are called inertial frames of reference. And remember, Newton's laws of motion, Newton's laws of motion are or hold, Newton's laws of motion hold only in such frames, right? Remember, when we discussed uh, that, I said, if you are in this car and you toss a ball upward, you will see it going up and coming down in a straight line. But if same ball tossed by you is observed by the ground-based observer, he will find the ball moving in parabolic path. But you and the ground-based observer will measure same value for the acceleration of the ball. Why I said so? Because the ground-based observer and you in the car are inertial observers. Why so? Because this car is moving at constant velocity related to this pole. Right? So you are inertial observers. Therefore, you will agree on the acceleration of the ball. So we will see uh, when we discuss our spatial theory of relativity further that this equation, this Galilean law of velocity transformation was questioned by Albert Einstein and he modified it because he showed that this leads to a contradiction when we apply it, not to a particle, but to light signal, right? We will discuss that before that, we will, uh, or I would say another thing, there is another set of 
the frames of reference which are called accelerated frames of reference right now how can you test that some frame of reference is inertial or not you can do some experiment for example you can tie a mass to one end of a string and hold the other end of the string so that the mass hangs freely now the attraction of the earth's gravity for the mass pulls it toward the center of earth and the direction of the string can be used to define a vertical axis now you try the same experiment in your car moving in a straight line at 55 km per hour speed which we considered in our example the result is the same the string hangs in the same vertical direction that means whether you are uh, in the car which is at rest or it is moving at constant velocity uh, with some value like 55 km per hour the result of the experiment is same that the string hangs in the same vertical direction so the car like the ground is an inertial frame of reference now if you try the experiment again when the car is accelerating braking or rounding a curve the string deviates from the vertical now these accelerated frames are non inertial frames even their acceleration is of centripetal kind right so think about it now all uh, any frame of reference which moves at constant velocity to a given inertial frame of reference is also inertial and all frames of reference which are under acceleration are accelerated frames of reference and newton's laws of motion hold only in inertial frames of reference now we will now make use of this galilean uh transformation law for velocities to understand it further we will do a sample problem we'll solve it together so be attentive so my sample problem bring my pen back so my simple problem goes like this i will use some other color it says the compass in an airplane indicates that it is headed due east its air speed indicator speed indicator reads 215 km per hour a steady wind a steady wind of 65 kilometer per hour is blowing do not e what is the 
velocity of the plane velocity of the plane with respect to the ground b if the pilot wishes to fly due east what must be the heading that is what must the compass read what must the compass read I repeat the question the compass in an airplane indicates that it is headed due east its air speed indicator reads 215 km per hour now a steady wind of 65 km per hour is blowing due north at a what is the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground part b if the pilot wishes to fly due east what must be the heading that is what must the compass read first understand this question Now remember our situation which we discuss. We said there is some particle E moving, and two observers S and S prime are observing that particle. Then we arrived at this velocity equation, which we call Galilean transformation of velocity. i will write first this equation here my equation was vps is equal to vps prime plus v s prime s let me check vps is equal to vps prime plus vs prime s right it's correct what is this equation and dealing some particle p is moving with respect one observer s with this velocity then it's moving with this velocity with respect to s prime observer and s prime observer is a moving relative to s observer with this particular velocity now here you have three things plane air and ground so in this example we have see you in the situation three things are involved particle s observer let me write it make it simple so three things are involved particle under observation particle p observer s and observer s prime and in this problem we have also three things plane 
ground and air plain ground and air now the moving particle in this problem is the plane so moving particle p corresponds to plane right moving particle p is my plane plane is moving now there are two reference frames one is ground and second is air second is air so we let the ground be our s system and air be s prime so my s system observer is ground and my s prime observer is air right plane is my particle now there are two reference frames ground and air so i let ground be my observer s and air be my observer s prime therefore by changing the notation i can write this uh, equation as so we move to the solution solution so changing the notation we write what i write i write v pg equal to v p a plus v a g v p g equal to v p a plus v a g compare it with this v p s is equal to i write it here then i oh, otherwise i have to turn the page v p s prime plus v s prime s still i will move the page in order to convince you it is v p s is equal to v p s prime plus v s prime s right so i have written v p g what's my vpg let me write it let's velocity of the plane relate to to ground what is vpa it is the velocity of the plane related to air velocity of the plane related to ground is vpg velocity of the plane related to air is vpa and what is vag it is velocity of air relative to ground so c plane is particle is replaced by plane uh s observer is our ground right s dash observer s prime observer is our air right air is our s prime ground is our s as you can see in the notation and particle is a word play i will draw the figure let me use some color this color so this was the situation is like this 
If this is north, this is east. Now, plane is moving. Let me draw the diagram, then I will another color. This is my VPA. This is my use another color here. This is my VAG. This is my, I should have used another color for it. Let me clear it. This is my VPG. And let this angle be alpha. This is north direction. This is east direction. This is east. Right. This is VPA. This is VAG. What is VAG? VAG is right. VAG, as I said, is velocity of air related to, related to ground. What is that? Question is saying a steady wind of 65 km per hour is blowing due north. So it is speed of air related to ground. It is going due north. Air is going do north with this velocity and its magnitude magnitude of this velocity is what 65 km per hour right what is VPA VPA is velocity of plane related to air what's its magnitude VPA is magnitude is 215 kilometer per hour because the air speed indicator indicates and the plane uh, 215 kilometer per hour speed that's my VPA velocity of plane relative to air velocity of plane relative to air its magnitude is uh, 215 per kilometer. And what is my VAG, velocity of air related to ground, that is 65 kilometer per hour, right? I'm asked to find what? Let us go to the question, what's my unknown? I have to find velocity of plane with respect to ground, that's VPG. VPG is my unknown velocity of plane with respect to ground, right? Since it is my unknown, I have to find its magnitude as well as direction. Its magnitude will be indicated by length of this vector and direction by this angle, uh, alpha. Let's understand it a bit. Now see, plane was heading, if there is no air, if this velocity is zero, then VPG will become equal to VPA. Because velocity of plane with respect to air will be same as velocity of plane with respect to ground. Because there, if there is no relative velocity between S and S prime, 
these velocities become equal. But what happens, this velocity is shifting velocity of uh, plane with respect to ground. Because air is pushing on the plane. If I show some cartoon, plane may be first here, then it moves this way, then it moves this way. Why? Because of this wind, plane was heading towards east. Right? Plane was heading towards east. As question says, the compass in an airplane indicates that it is headed due east. But what happens? The velocity of the air shifts its position and its velocity vector shifts. Right? So we can find this a right angular triangle here. Simply this hypotenuse square will be this square plus this square. So magnitude of VPG we can find from this equation. Magnitude of VPG simply is using uh, Pythagoras theorem, square root of VPA square magnitude only plus magnitude of VAG square. And you put the values, I'm saying magnitude of VPG, velocity of plane with respect to ground, is equal to under root or square root of VPA square plus VAG square. When I substitute the values, it is 215 kilometer per hour square plus VAG is what? 65 kilometer per hour, then there is square, whole thing is in the root, 65 kilometer per hour square. Then make the calculation, it will turn out to be 225 kilometer per hour. So the magnitude of velocity of plane with respect to ground is 225 kilometer per hour. It's only magnitude. What about the direction? You can use tan theta as VAG by VPA. Or I can write alpha is tan inverse. VAG by VPA, VAG by VPA, which is tan inverse. So we should the values 65 kilometer per hour over 215 kilometer per hour. which is 16.8 degrees. This is my alpha. 16.8 degrees. Thus with respect to the ground, the plane is flying at 225 kilometer per hour in a direction 16.8 degree north of east, right? Note that its ground speed is greater than its air speed, right? Let's move to part B now. This was part A. I should have written here as a solution of part A. Let us move to part B now. Now in this case, let me draw the figure first. So 
So this is east. This is my north. And let me use colors. This is G. Last year playing with respect to crown. Another color. This is my VAG. And this is my. V V A and let this angle be in beta say a 90 degree. This is my no north, this one east, this V P G, this V A G, this V P E. I understand this. Now in this case the pilot must head into the wind so that the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground points east. Remember question is saying if the pilot wishes to fly due east, what must be the pilot heading towards? What, what is the reading of the compass? If he wants to fly, what is? then this VPG vector must point towards east. In order to do that, he has to counter the drift of air. For that, what pilot will do? Pilot will uh, head into the wind so that the velocity of the plane with respect to ground points east. Now, as it indicated by the diagram, you must think about it. Uh, now the wind remains unchanged, wind, pilot cannot change wind, pilot can change its uh, velocity with respect to the air in order to adjust its velocity with respect to the ground, right? So pilot is going into the wind. I will make cartoon here, this plane. The pilot is going now. Let me clear this beta here first. So this is here 90 degree. Now this is plane. The pilot is going into the wind. Right? This angle is now beta, this 90 degree, right? Think about it, take your time. So the wind remains unchanged and the vector diagram representing equation, uh, this equation, is shown in this B, the second figure, right? Note that the three vectors sit and form a right triangle as they did in figure of part A, they were forming a right triangle. They still form a right triangle. But the difference in this case is now hypotenuse of the uh, right triangle triangle is VPA rather than VPG. Here hypotenuse was VPG. Now hypotenuse is VPA. So again using the Pythagoras theorem, I can write the magnitude of VPG is under root VPA square 
minus VAG. Now minus is because now hypotenuse has changed. We check it. VPG is under root VPA square minus VAG square. So we choose the values. It is our Uh, 215 kilometer per hour whole square minus 65 kilometer per hour square 215 kilometer per hour square minus 65 kilometer per hour square when you put the values and solve it it turns out to be 205 km per hour. What about the angle beta? Beta, you can see from the triangle, is sine inverse VAG by VPA. When I put the values, uh, it turns out to be 17.6 degrees. Let me encircle it. So beta is 17.6 degrees, sine inverse VAG by VPA and VPG lost your plane with respect to ground is 205 km per hour. Right? So the pilot must head into the wind by an angle beta, which is 17.6 degrees. Right? Uh, and the ground speed is now uh, velocity of the pilot with respect to ground is 205 km per hour. Right? So, in order to uh, make VPG directed east, pilot has to orient the plane into the wind. He has to shift, pilot has to shift by an angle beta into the wind. 17.6 degrees right so now you can see the velocity of uh, uh, plane with respect to ground is now less than the airspeed think about this question slowly i summarize a bit Today's lecture. We started with relative motion. We said we want a relationship between the velocities or positions or accelerations observed by two observers, S and S prime. So there was a particle moving, P, and two observers observers S and S prime which had a relative motion between them they were moving at relative velocity but we assume that is constant in magnitude and direction they were observing the same particle then we got the equation of transformation for position then we differentiated that we got the equation of transformation for velocities and we got this result uh, for identical accelerations and from that we defined our inertial frames of reference and non-inertial frames of reference. Excel, all accelerated frames of reference are non-inertial frames of reference. Then we solved this problem making use of the Galilean transformation of velocities equation. So this is all for today. Do your homework, follow your lectures, make notes, make your notebook that will help you. 
you can listen to the lectures repeatedly at your own pace and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you god bless you assalamu alaikum